Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be designing this Pokeball, giving it some really cool textures and stuff like that, putting it into an interesting scene. Um, it shouldn't take too long, it's a pretty simple model. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Also, we can probably rig it up so that it can actually be opened. Uh, but for now, uh, let's just let's just model the basics of it. So I'm gonna start with a um, round cube. I'm gonna give it a one radius. And I'm gonna do, let's just do like 10 for the arc. Actually, let's do let's do 20. All right, cool. So we have basically the inner sphere here. Um, I'm also gonna give this a subdivision surface. I'm gonna save this as Pokeball. Cool. Um, let's see. So it looks like there's like two halves. Basically, this thing is getting cut in the middle. So I'm gonna. This is gonna be our inside. So I'm just gonna shade this smooth. Go to Material Preview, and I'm just gonna give this like a black shader like that like a darker shader and then i'm going to duplicate it and scale it up a bit all right now for this one we're going to want to cut this in half so let me grab a cube scale it on the z scale it up a little bit and let's cut this thing in half so let's go ahead and use our boolean operation to cut that that looks good um, and as you can see we have our inner cube here now this outer one we're just going to want to make this uh well i'm going to separate this into two different parts but before we do that Let's add a cylinder and let's rotate it on the Y 90 degrees, scale it in and then bring it out on our X like right here. And let's just see if we can estimate the size here of this opening. I think that might be good. Um, and again, I'm going to use my Boolean to cut. And then what's great is we can still scale this down if we need to. I'm also gonna add a edge split to this and a subdiv so that it's a little bit smoother oh doesn't want to doesn't want to add the subdiv let's see if we apply it oof all right we'll, we'll come back to that anyway this is starting to look really good all right so we're going to need to add another cylinder we're going to rotate that on the y-axis scale it down bring it out on the x scaled in a bit that looks pretty good maybe scale it down just a little bit more i think that looks good and then we're also going to go like this on the x bring it in to about there and then we're going to duplicate it bring it out on the x scale that down and just make sure this is scaled properly that looks pretty good again this is pretty much it i think for like the main part of the modeling Let's see. I'm going to give this, well, I'm going to apply the scale to both of these. Object apply scale. And we're just going to give these like some nice bevels here. So I'm going to give this a bevel modifier. Also going to go here, random, cool. And this is going to get give this just the slightest bevel modifier. An edge split would be fantastic. And then a subdiv. Cool. That's looking really, really good. Just the slightest little bevel. Maybe give it like five segments. And then I'm going to copy the modifiers over to this. And we're good to go. And this is looking really, really good so far. Um, and you know what I was thinking with this one right here? I think the reason, I think the edge split wasn't working. Let's see. Edge split, subdivision surface. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't want to. There we go. All right, that looks good. All right, so that's pretty much the Pokeball right there. Um, let's see. I think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's go ahead and apply all of these modifiers. And let's go into edit mode and let's separate by loose parts. Cool. And now let's go back into shading. All right, so this top is going to be red. And then the middle is black. Yep, that looks good. Cool. So, so far we're doing good. Um, let's go into cycles and set up some lighting and like a nice floor. And then we'll start to add some materials here. Uh, I'm going to add an environment texture in here. Uh, let's just do, let's do this one for now. Yeah, it looks good. All right, I'm going to add in a floor plane here. Scale it up 20. Bring it down below the surface here. Cool. Object. Actually, you know what? Let's scale it by 0.75. Object, apply, scale. Tab into edit mode here. Go to the edge, bring it up, E, Z, like that. And then control B to bevel. 
increase those subdivisions looks good and maybe just shade that smooth scale it down a little bit place our camera over here all right and then we're also going to adjust our camera's settings here we're going to make that a 90 degree angle we're going to bring that down um, and then we're also going to give this like a nice grid floor shader as well so far it's looking pretty good um let's see Honestly, this might even just look good with like a nice metallic surface with like a low roughness. Let's see. Not terrible. Um, what I would like to do is like add a bunch of really nice materials to this. Like I kind of want this thing to look like kind of scratched up, like kind of nice. I'm also curious if we added a bevel to this, how this would look. It doesn't look like the bevel really wants to work here. Yeah, bevel doesn't want to work, but that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at some materials. Let me go back to my real-time materials pack by Ducky 3D. These are some re really nice procedural materials that he has made. I think there's a scratched paint one in here. Yeah, there it is. All right, this one's cool. So this one's like an island paint, like scratched paint. I really like this one. I think we can customize this to make it red. Oh, this one's good too. Let's do that. And then let's find, which one's this? Paint chip. Let's try these, maybe this one, and then that's looking really, really good. Cool, and then let's see if we can find like a really cool metal material as well for the inside, maybe this, or possibly that or that. Yeah, let's try all of these. So we're gonna try some different combinations. So I'm gonna go back to my original file. Now I'm gonna paste these in, right? And they're all over the place, and I'm just gonna move them to a new collection and call it hide. And then we're going to hide that collection. Cool. And then I'm just going to mess around with some materials here. Um, for the red, let's try that red paint, scratched paint. Oh, that looks sick. Um, and what's cool is we can we can raise this brightness, make it more red, like a deeper kind of red like that. And then we should be able to adjust the scale of the scratches. There we go. That looks cool though. The roughness scale as well we can adjust. That's awesome. I think that is so cool looking. Um, let's let me just check out the scratch scale as well. Kind of messing with these options here. Very cool. Oh, this is the color of the inside too. Okay, actually, the color for the inside, we probably want to make that maybe a little bit darker. Maybe even slightly red. No, I actually kind of like the gray. Okay, I think that looks good. All right, so for the bottom, let's go ahead and check out. Uh, let's see. Actually, I kind of want to use this material again from the top and just make it white. See what it looks like. Do you think that looks cool, guys? I think it looks pretty cool. Makes it gives it kind of like a, a rough material there. Of course, we're going to adjust all of these settings here. Cool. This and this and this will all be the same material. Or do we want this middle? Maybe maybe this middle piece, these two right here, will make these glossy. I'll just give this a glossy BSDF with zero roughness, or maybe like a higher roughness. Cool, so maybe like those two, we'll, we'll keep those metallic like that. And then for this middle one, maybe we'll do something like, maybe not that one, let's see. Galvanized steel, whoa, that looks sick. And then we'll just adjust the shape scale here. Again, thank you, Ducky. I don't know if Ducky's watching, he might not be, but this looks so cool. <laughs> Real-time materials, you can't go wrong here. This looks amazing. Oh my gosh. I'm loving this. This is awesome. Um, you know what? I might just go with a flat plane here. Honestly, guys. I'm just going to link that material, scale this up, bring it down. And I'm definitely going to be using some depth of field here. And you know what else, guys? I'm going to change this to this HDRI because I love this HDRI. Or maybe... I want to make it like a mountainous one. There's there's a lot that I have here. Honestly, I should probably get more. 
let's see the angle maybe like this type of angle here uh, let me go to shading <clears throat> excuse me world and we're just going to adjust some of the settings here oops we're going to go ahead and add mapping and texture coordinate all right let's see <laughs> very cool let me try a different hdri i'm not not a huge fan of that one what does this one look like oh that one's kind of cool i kind of like this one just find a cool angle here let me just get our depth of field going click on depth of field select i'll just select this like front cube here and then i'll do like something ridiculous and then I'll just adjust it manually that looks pretty good we'll give it like 0.4 this looks awesome just gonna mess with the uh, mess with the camera settings some more and then maybe mess with the background a little bit more so far it looks pretty good like it's pretty solid overall um i'm just thinking i also kind of don't love that this i don't i'm not in love with this material here for these buttons so maybe we do make those principal bsdf uh just with like a hot a low roughness there a little bit high metallic actually here let's do this let's try this that looks kind of cool that's not terrible. This is looking pretty freaking cool though so far. You know what? Let's change it to, yeah, let's change it to a nice, maybe an orthographic perspective. Like, dare we? Woo! You guys already know where I'm going with this. Maybe a slight angle like this. Scale this up a bunch. And then we're gonna need to really adjust the, uh, the camera angle here. And we're gonna need to adjust our depth of field is looking a little crazy. Hold on. Cool. All right. The background plane is scaled up. The camera could probably be tilted down a bit. That looks pretty good. And then I'm actually going to take our, our plane here, our floor plane, and I'm going to adjust the scale a little bit for this the shapes there we go that's better and then the depth of field still a little too intense maybe we adjust it to like f8 there we go and then should we make this whole thing rotate maybe 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 it's looking really really cool um, I don't know if you guys can see this from my screen there we go that's a little bit better to see right here um, so far guys I'm pretty pleased with this I do think the scratch scaling could be adjusted a little bit more that cool what do you guys think I mean I'm pretty pleased with it roughness and then the roughness scale we can mess around with that as well maybe like one that would be good this looks really really solid though and then I think we can also adjust the roughness of the internal like this black texture right here let's see that's better this this the only thing I'm like not happy with is the actual button itself so let me just go back to my real-time materials pack that I bought from ducky 3d shout out to him and see if there's like any good glossy materials here I think there was I kind of like this one here glide let's try this one I really like this one and then is there any other ones that stand out to me I don't see I thought there was glossy plastics here this one's pretty good though we'll probably go with something like this yeah let's let's go ahead and copy that over all right back to this and then what's great is if I paste it in right or is it I can just be like uh, you know what go over to the hide folder cool and we're gonna go ahead and see what this glide material looks like on this and we're going to give this a saturation of zero. Let's 
Not terrible. I don't know if I'm noticing anything too crazy going on. Did I shade these smooth? There we go. Okay, I knew I knew something was wrong here. Everything else good. Everything looks pretty darn good. And then we have this nice isometric view of our Pokeball. And then I'm, I'm only thinking now, maybe adjust some of the settings of this floor here. Maybe make it a little bit darker. Roughness scale, kind of change that up a bit. Shape scale. It looks good. What do you guys think? I'm pretty happy with it so far. Only the other thing I can think of is just to make it spin. Um, and that shouldn't be an issue. I'll just parent everything to an empty and we'll make it spin around. But let me just mess with the lighting a little bit more. That looks kind of nice. I kind of want there to be like a lot of contrast. I kind of like that. All right, let's parent all this to an empty. So I'm going to add in an empty cube. I am going to scale it up a little bit. That looks pretty much perfect. And then we'll just parent everything to the to the cube here. Let me just make sure my camera is not selectable. Um, and then this right here, don't need that anymore. And this we don't need anymore. So we just want one, two, three, four, five, six, parent to object. And now our empty should be able to be rotated like this. And we should be able to now animate that. So frame one, insert location. Actually, insert rotation, and then we'll just go all the way to frame 120, and we'll just do a nice 360. Insert location, and then we're just going to make our end frame 120. And we're going to highlight all keyframes, interpolation mode, linear. And we're going to zoom in on our timeline here and make sure frame, the first keyframe is at frame 0. We should have a full looping animation now. Let's test it out. Looking pretty solid, except for it's not linear. Why is it not linear? Cool, I think we're good. I think that's it. I mean, I can't really think of anything else unless you guys can. Um, maybe we add one thing under this that's just like a, a little plate that like glows, you know what I mean? That like kind of highlights our actual, here I'm gonna full screen this, kind of highlights our actual, uh, object here so I'm gonna full screen this and I am just going to move the floor down a bit move this down a bit object apply scale I'm gonna add a bevel modifier actually I'm just going to copy all of these modifiers boom and then we can just increase that bevel a little bit and then I think I'm gonna give this like a maybe a metallic shader the low roughness. Now we could go ahead and give this a uh, bumped metal look. We could give this blocks. I don't know if I love the blocks one. You know the galvanized steel though? I do like galvanized steel. So I'm gonna duplicate that, adjust the scaling of this. Go ahead and take a look at this texture here. There it is, okay cool. Roughness, maybe up that roughness a little bit. Cool, that looks good. And then what I want to do is I now want to add in some lights. So I think what I'm going to do is add in a, let me think about how I want this to look. You know what, I'm going to add in a Taurus and I'm going to increase the radius. And then I'm going to decrease the minor radius, make this really, really, really thin like that yep and then I'm gonna shade it smooth move it down scale it in and then I'm gonna give it a nice emission shader of five or six five looks good and then I'm gonna do an array modifier on that oops array and we're just gonna do one maybe a little bit more than one and just give it a couple of those and just adjust the spacing as needed I think that looks pretty cool. Um, you can do really cool stuff with this. I mean, I think, I think I'm think i pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and set up some render settings. This does look pretty cool. I think maybe I'll go with just three, like a three count there. 
Um, what do you guys think? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that overall. All right, so let's go ahead and check out our settings. Um, light paths, or let's do samples. Samples, we'll do 150. And then for the light paths, we'll do 20 for everything except for volume. Cool. And then we should be good to go. Um, there's really nothing else I don't think. I don't think I need to adjust anything else. I think this is pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and go to solid view, F12. And let's see how this comes out. All right, so as you guys can see, it's not coming out good, and that's because something is hidden. So I need to go ahead and check. There's something that's hidden here from render. What is it? Is it this piece here? Uh, yeah, so we got to go under our empty and make sure everything is enabled properly for the render. All right, let's go ahead and try again. Cool. All right, we should be good to go now. I think everything is rendering properly now. Um, another thing that you might want to do is enable your motion blur for this particular render. Um, other than this, though, I think everything looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this overall. It's just a nice, clean render. We've got some awesome materials from Ducky 3D, some nice chipped paint. We have that galvanized steel in the middle, and then we have our button. The only other thing I can think of is maybe splitting the center sphere. So maybe I'll just do that and double check the sizing of all of our, all of our different things here, and we should be good to go. Um, let me check the, the distance also between this and the inner sphere. Yeah, okay. So all I'm going to do, guys, here is I'm just going to add a plane, right? I'm going to scale it up a little bit, and we're going to divide this middle piece with the plane. So I'm going to actually just add the slightest solidify modifier to our plane, like even slighter than that. Point, let's see, point zero zero five, apply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the plane, shift click my sphere, control shift B, difference. And as you guys can see, we have the slightest little cut into here. Let's go ahead and just see what that looks like in render. I think it looks pretty solid. I mean, overall, this thing would open, so you would need the slightest little opening there. Um, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I don't think I would change anything else. I think it looks really, really good. And I think the chipped paint looks fantastic. I like this little array that we set up down here. Um, maybe the other thing we could do is just bring the floor plane up just a little bit to meet that edge. That looks good. Actually, let's bring it down a little bit, scale this up. I want it to be a little bit taller. There we go, object, apply, scale. And then I kind of want this bevel to be a little bit sharper. That looks perfect. And then bring our floor up. Just like that. And that looks fantastic. I think that is the completed render. I'm very happy with how this came out. Um, we have our scratched paint, and then we have, of course, when we press play, we have our Pokeball rotating around, kind of showcasing what that looks like. I think it looks awesome. What do you guys think? Um, definitely drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. It's running a little bit slow right now because of the materials, but if we go into solid view, it should run pretty quickly. So I'm really excited to kind of render this out. Um, trying to make sure there's no last minute things I want to add. Maybe have it hovering a little bit. We could try that. Here, actually, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to show you guys a really cool trick real quick. And then this will be the last part of this tutorial. I'm going to add in a empty. There's an empty plane axis. I'm just going to go ahead to solid view so it's easier to see here. Go back to frame zero. I'm going to bring the empty back right here on the axis. So now. Well, what I want to do is I want to make this thing look like it's hovering just a little bit. So I'm going to actually keyframe the location of my empty, go to frame 60, and just bring it up just a little bit, keyframe it right there. And then I'm going to duplicate my first keyframe. So now if you watch, our empty should be going like this, right? It looks really good. I'm going to highlight the keyframes and turn them into Bezier. Now this looks really, really good. How do we actually attach this movement to our, to our other empty? Well, I'm going to add a constraint. Go to Object Constraint, Copy Location, and then we're going to use the Z location of this empty here. And now, if you guys watch, this thing is actually going to. <laughs> just so it's so easy, but like not a lot of people think this way. But if you just add a constraint, we can now have that rotation still rotating while our empty brings it up and down to kind of hover. So now, if we play this back, we have this nice hovering motion, right? And it just looks really, really clean, really simple. It allows us to control the height with just the empty. 
while this still individually rotates. And I just think it looks so good. So I wanted to show you guys how to do that. And I, I do hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I think there was a lot of awesome, valuable content here to check out. And I'm really excited to render this out, see how this is going to look. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next tutorial.